Welcome back to the Optimal HRV video series. In this fourth video, we will explore how do I improve my HRV. Again, I'm Matt Bennett. I'm one of the co-founders of Optimal HRV. In the first part of our training, we want to talk about short and long-term heart rate variability trends and scores. So as we introduced in the last training, current score, previous score, and even seven-day average, think about those as your short-term scores. This kind of really answers the question, how am I doing today? How am I doing this week? These scores will fluctuate quite a bit, especially your current score and previous score. So we don't want to get too freaked out about a score or two. What we want to see is both our 30-day and overall average, our long-term scores, approve over time. So again, we want to see a gradual increase over time of that 30-day average. So I want to give you two goals as ways to really look at your daily readings and, and maybe a, a more strategic light. So goal number one is to try to keep your current score above your 30-day average on most of your readings. You won't make this every time, but what you want to do is to say 30-day readings sort of gives you a baseline of overall health to do things in your life, to live a life where you're getting healthier over time. So when we accomplish this goal, you're really in a good state of being and you're ready to take on challenges and really give your best effort. The other goal is a little bit longer term. We want to try to get that seven day average score above the 30 day average score. This means overall it's outside just one good day or one bad day, but this shows overall we're doing things that's going to improve our health over time. So these are nice data sets to compare against one another. And since one of our goals is to continuously improve the 30 day average, as well as our overall average, the seven day average really gives you a nice snapshot of, of the last week or seven days to say, okay, I'm, I'm trending good compared to my baseline. Accomplishing this goal shows that your mental, intellectual, social health are trending in the right direction, again, with a lot of great benefits over time. Next, I want to look at what are some things we can do to improve our short-term HRV scores. So let's say we have a bad score. And again, don't freak out over a bad score. We all have down scores for many, many reasons. Maybe, you know, sometimes when I go for a really long run, that's very healthy to go on a long run, but my next HRV score is really low. I might go do great, uh, have fun and I'll do a lot of trainings, take a late flight back. It was a great training trip, but because of the stress inherent to it, my score, HRV score the next day just crashes. One or two bad scores, not the end of the world, nothing to get stressed out about. One or two bad scores is a signal to do, okay, what are some things I can do to recover from the stress and challenges I've been experiencing? And so here are a few things you can think about before we get in this list. Please, if you're going to implement this, check with your medical provider. While most of these are very safe things to do, um, they also, depending on your health conditions, might put you at risk. So please, please, please check with your medical providers. One easy thing that most of us have access to is something called hydrotherapy. I do this every day. I'm not a big fan of it, except I feel better after I do it. Uh, so hydrotherapy is just, you take your shower. Most of us like hot showers, so take that hot shower. And at the end, uh, turn it cold, as cold as you can stand. Stay under it for a minute or as long as you can. Turn it back to hot. Turn it to cold again, try it again, stay under it for a minute or as long as you can, back to hot, and finish on cold. So it's three times back and forth. Uh, some people suggest you do up to six. I'll be honest, I can only stand this three times. I do not like the cold part of this. What this does is it really gets the blood flowing in your body. So it really promotes cardiovascular. It also puts your body in a state of recovery. So it speeds up the recovery process. It kind of wakes your body up. And even though I'll admit it's a little painful to do, uh, a lot of good uh, research is coming out about it. One little thing that's not as painful is we can just talk to somebody we trust. One of the best ways to improve our health, our emotions, our brain functioning is just to talk to somebody if we're struggling with stress, just to talk to somebody who we trust. Even if we're doing um, okay with stress, anytime we can hang around people that bring joy and love into our life, it improves our overall health. Also, you can do some deep breathing. So one of my favorites is, um, especially if we just need to be at our best self, is to inhale for a count of seven 
exhale for a count of seven. And so this is a really easy sort of breathing that we know helps balance and restore a strong heart rate variability. If you're feeling really stressed out, you might only inhale for five and exhale for 10. So that really activates the more calming part of your nervous system. But this equal breathing really helps to balance it over out. So if seven in and seven out are hard for you, just do five. If that's hard, try four. Um, again, if you're feeling more anxious, you might try inhale for four, exhale for eight. Try to make the exhale twice as long as the inhale. Again, it activates the calming side of your nervous system. Take a nap. If you're a napper, a nap can really help you recover, especially if you didn't get a good sleep the night before. Go for a walk or other low impact activity or exercise. So one of the things I've learned with HRV, I, I enjoy running for the most part, but you know, sometimes we're told you need to exercise every day. Um, HRV has shown us not necessarily true. So sometimes instead of maybe taking a, a run or doing a hard workout, I'll just go for a walk around the block. I'll still be active, but I won't do as strenuous of an activity. So just some of those light activities can be really good. Um, stretch, uh, a really good stretch is to hold one arm behind your back. So your other arm kind of grabs that hand and then lean over to the other side and really get a good stretch on this neck here. This stretch is one of the, the nerves called the vagal nerve. And what it does is that really helps uh, heart rate variability as well. So just some simple stretching, even touching your toes. Um, if you got access to yoga, yoga is also a really good thing for this. Try to eat healthy over the next several meals. There's a big connection between our diet and heart rate variability. So try to eat healthy and a big, big thing here, avoid large amounts of caffeine, alcohol, or drugs. All those will, for the most part, have a very negative uh, impact on short-term HRV scores. So these are just some strategies. If you don't like your morning score that you can do throughout the day to improve it and hopefully get that evening score up higher. Finally, I wanna look at some long-term strategies. One is that if your medical provider is giving you any advice like quitting smoking, doing more exercises, uh, maybe even getting on a medication, those can be really good for heart rate variability. Again, the healthier our body, that's gonna show up in our heart rate variability scores. So again, if your uh, medical provider is giving you any advice, that is a good long-term strategy. Improve your overall diet if possible. Again, something that diet will help in the short term, but also long term as well. Moderate exercises we talked about on most days. If you got a, even a really good heart rate variability scores, maybe go for a little bit of a longer run. It shows your body can take a little bit more strain and stress. Get good sleep. Most of us need eight hours of sleep a night, if not more. One of the things I've learned on my being on a heart rate variability monitor is a lot of nights I need even more than eight hours of sleep. So try to get good sleep, as much sleep as possible. Most of us need that good eight hours. Mental health therapy, we also know that healing past trauma, getting plans and coping skills to deal with stress can also have a big impact on us. Again, as we mentioned in the short term, another good thing, try to over the long term, spend time with people that bring joy and love into your life. Social engagement is a great way to improve overall health and heart rate variability. The final thing is we talked a little bit about some breathing strategies, but really also thinking about a mindfulness uh, meditation practice. Um, you wanna talk if you're in mental health therapy, talk to your therapist about some good ideas. Um, maybe just some deep breathing for a few minutes a day. Um, there's a lot of great uh, apps out there and other things as well. So these are just a few things we see in the research that can improve your long-term heart rate variability scores. I want to thank you for joining us for this fourth training in our series. Again, my name is Matt Bennett, and we will see you for video number five soon.